Welcome back everybody, this is Always back with the next video of Apache Maven Essential Training Series. In this video I'm going to be explaining to you guys about Project Object Model, in short POM. Now we're going to talk about POM categories and configuration, POM syntax, project dependency, project relationship and I'll show you some best practices to write your POM files. Now what are the POM categories and configuration? The POM file contains all the information about a project. The file is stored with an XML extension as you can see here we have the file POM.XML. So as you can see in the POM file it has a group ID, an artifact ID and a version of your application. So remember these three things make up a Maven coordinates and are required for all projects. Although this is not a comprehensive list, but some of the most common categories that are usually included in POM file includes the project coordinates. Now each of these categories has its own XML tag. For example, a scope tag would be less than sign and the word scope and the greater than sign. Although these are not all the categories that you can use in POM file, but these are the most often used to add a dependency. Now let's talk about project object model syntax. So the project object model or a POM is documented is an XML file where XML stands for extensible markup language, which is always located in a base directory of your project. So here you can see we have the IntelliJ IDEA project. This is a base directory and we have the POM.XML file. The syntax of XML looks similar to HTML using the angle brackets to indicate the beginning and end of the element. So the difference between is that the element do not follow any standard list of keywords. Instead, they are descriptive of the content inside the tags. Every open XML tag must have a corresponding closing tag and tags can be nested in one inside other tag. The file can start with an XML declaration, but this is an optional. All values in the file are declared as an XML element. All projects extend the super project object model or POM automatically. And the specific project POM contains all the information for that project. And in this example, we can see we have the group ID, we have the artifact ID, we have the version of your application packaging details which is going to be jar. We have the name of our applications, a URL, and we have two dependency. We have the J unit dependency, we have the log for J dependency. So uh, we can see that we have the Maven coordinates which is made up of this group ID, artifact ID, and the versions. And we have the packaging which is not a part of the, well this is not a basic requirement to write that down there but these three things made up of project coordinates. Now let's look at some of the project dependency. Now we have two dependency. Dependency which is getting a J unit for us. We have the dependency which is getting log for J for us. And if you look at the left in the project browser, we have the external libraries tabs. I'm gonna expand that. Now the first we have is a Java standard library which is um, following the path to the JDK where I'm installed in my PC. Next we have two Maven dependency J unit and log for J. Well what happens if I delete this code and I save the file? I will save the file and you will notice that it will automatically update our external libraries and we don't see log for J anymore. Well I'm just gonna press undo here and then I'm gonna save the file and Maven will download our dependency and put that into our external libraries. Now I've already shown you where you can download dependency and the most common one is JUnit, Log4J and JMF which is a Java media uh, library. So this is how you can uh, add and remove dependency in POM file and which will automatically affect your project. Now the next thing we talk about is project relationship. One of the reasons to use Maven is the ability to easily track down dependency using the POM file. The relationship between project can be external or internal. An example of an external relationship might be the log for J and J unit, where an internal relationship might be an example of where project depends on a project B and all project relationship are established using Maven coordinates. Remember a Maven coordinate is made up of group ID, artifact ID and the version number. 
to indicate that a relationship we describe the dependency as a group ID colon artifact ID colon version. Now don't forget that project also inherit project relationships such as dependency from the parent POM file and from the super POM file. Now, what are the POM best practices? Well, grouping dependency is one of the best practice. This can be done by creating a separate POM file that simply declares a set of common dependency. For example, each project that uses Hibernate has a dependency on the Spring Framework and MySQL.JDBC driver. So by grouping these dependency, we can create a separate external POM file that way the file can be used for all projects that we have the same dependency on the one you create using hibernate this approach also allow the other project to reuse the file and the second consideration regarding best practices is difference between using inheritance versus a multi-module relationship so these are the projects have the common components that are totally unrelated to each other but together they are required to make a larger project this is an example when you should use a multi-module approach and the reason to use inheritance occurs when projects have shared dependency for any programming language including the programming of the pom.xml file. It always helps to use the proper identification to make it easier to read. Well, another practice is to follow standard layout when your coordinates are listed first and the important examples of how Maven has adopted convention over configuration. It also makes the program easier to read and be maintained by other programmers. Alright, so these were the few things I wanted to explain to you guys before we start learning how to create a Maven project with different IDEs. Alright, so thank you so much for watching and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, subscribe to the channel. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.